Hey, I'm here today to talk to you about this right here, a front mount intercooler kit. This one is from Godspeed Project. And I do have to say that the fitment was actually very good. And there are some positives and negatives to owning a front mount intercooler. And I am going to explain some of those to you today. Now the positives are you don't have the heat soak like you do with the top mount intercooler. And it does look really cool sitting up in the front grill. It's very aggressive looking, but there are some negatives to it. And here are a few of the negatives here. One of them is you do lose your bumper beam for safety. Now the thing is with those bumper beams, bumper beams are really only good for about a 15 mile an hour crash anyways, 15 to 30 mile an hour crash anyways. So either way, you're going to ruin your bumper beam from a major accident at say 45, 50 miles an hour anyways. Your car's probably going to be totaled. So you do lose the bumper beam, but it does give you a nice bracket to mount it to. There are modifications you have to do to the bumper. Anybody that did research on a front mount intercooler pretty much already knows that. Uh, I was able to retain the fog lights. The pipe does go below the fog lights, but behind the little cover right there, you still do have to cut away some of the bumper in order to make it fit. So there is a little bit of an issue there. And same on the opposite side, you do have to cut away a little bit behind the fog light cover in order to get them to fit. You also, if you have a Perrin cold air intake like I had, you do lose the cold air intake. So that is kind of a bummer, but in all honesty, not that big of a deal uh, that you have here. Now, one of the things that I did notice was the handling characteristics of my car did change. And it's weird to explain, but it almost feels better than it did before, even though the weight distribution has kind of changed because now the weight, instead of being back here from the top mount intercooler, is now up front. So there are some advantages there and disadvantages there. It's too much weight on the front, which could change the characteristics of driven too hard into a corner. However, I've actually found that the car actually handles better. And I think part of that is because rather than having that weight, from the top mount up here. This weight is now gone, and this core weighs about the same as what your bumper beam, your stock bumper beam did uh, from the factory. So now you've basically reduced weight. I actually did weigh the old Turbo XS top mount that I had to the, and the uh, bumper, the bumper beam, to what I have on here now with this front mount intercooler kit. And this kit actually does weigh about four pounds less. So you do save four pounds of weight, which really you're not gonna notice, but it does change the weight distribution. It does put the weight closer to the ground, so it is gonna have a lower center of gravity than it did before. However, it does also move the weight up toward the front of the car. So it might offset each other, but the car actually, to me, drives a little bit better as far as the handling is concerned. But this isn't really a piece that's about handling, it's about power. And how does it do with turbo lag? And a lot of people always ask about, oh, well, the turbo lag, it's bad when you go front mount. Well, here, turbocharger that's on there is a VF39 turbocharger, okay? It is running a front mount intercooler kit. I actually hit boost at the same RPM as I did with that big four and a half inch core Turbo XS top mount. The same time, it hasn't changed. My air fuel ratios are exactly the same. My ignition timing is exactly the same. It does not knock. The only thing that I have noticed, and again, I live here in Florida, so it's hot all the time, is the little bit of heat soak that I had, I don't deal with that as much anymore. However, you still get heat soak on this pipe right here. And what I've tried to do to combat that is because it is sitting over the turbocharger, so the turbocharger is gonna have a lot of heat, is I've added a turbo blanket from Thermal Zero, and I've also added a heat wrap. That's also from Godspeed. So what we have here is the ways that I've tried to combat heat being soaked up into there. And I know there's ways that you can wrap this in a deflecting shield or whatever, but at the same time, I haven't really had to do that because the cars actually ran great, you know, with or without it. 
So, and one of the ways that you can combat this, of course, I went to a reverse hood scoop right there, is you can also keep your hood scoop on there and it just blows air directly on it. Now, at this point, you don't really need that big, giant STI uh, top mount. Uh, hood scoop, you can just use a regular WRX one just to blow enough air just to keep the pipes cool and I think that will resolve a lot of your issues but I've tried to retain the heat in the turbocharger itself and that helps with turbo lag anyways uh, by retaining the heat in there and as well as with the downpipe I tried to make it so that the heat gets dissipated underneath the car and not into the engine bay so I have been able to uh, reduce the amount of heat that that pipe sees and one of the things we also have here is the Godspeed uh, Type RS blow-off valve running full recirc. And I've had this whole kit, by the way, on here for about three or four months. So I've let this kind of work itself in. And the blow-off valve I've had absolutely no problems with. Uh, the spring that came with it, or springs, plural, I should say, was a little stiff. So I actually removed one of the springs. It's just like using a tile uh, wastegate. Uh, I removed one of the springs to just kind of put a lighter load on it, and then it's got the adjustment bolt right here. Uh, really easy to use. So um, you just un loosen the, uh, the bolt up here, and then there's an Allen key that goes right on top, and uh, you tighten it or loosen it however you want. So I've tightened that up a little bit to kind of stiffen the spring up, but for the most part I've had no problems with it. Now, some people may say this kit may look familiar, and that's because there's a lot of people using the same kit. I only say that it's Godspeed's kit, or Rev9 Power as they're known now, uh, because that's who I got it from. However, this kit, I have said numerous amounts of times, looks exactly identical to the SSAC or, X, or XS Power front mount intercooler and a couple of other ones that are on eBay as well but those are probably the two most famous right there is the SSAC and the XS Power uh, front mount intercoolers so it might be the same kit I've looked at them they're very very similar with each other I haven't really noticed any differences between the two of them so I can't say they are the same or they're not but I got this one through Godspeed it has been absolutely perfect the fitment was great uh, I've had no problems, even with the bumper beam going up front, the uh, bolts lined up perfectly, even the, uh, you can't really see them, but the clips that hold the bumper on to the bumper beam all fit perfectly with no problems. So overall, I mean, it's it's been a great kit. And like I said, I've had it for about four months. The blow-off valve is broken in. Everything's perfectly fine. I've had no vacuum leaks. I have been, I've had no problems whatsoever. It comes with these really high-quality uh, T-bolt clamps, really high-quality couplers here. Uh, it even came with the L-bracket, which some people I have seen when they've ordered theirs from other companies that it hasn't come with this bracket. Um, and all the pipes, everything, even the uh, coolant overflow tank right here came with it. Now, the other modification uh, that you have to do is you do have to modify where your coolant overflow goes. Right down there was a bracket I had to cut, and that's usually that bottom bracket that holds your old coolant overflow tank in there. Uh, I had to cut that in order to fit that pipe in. Uh, but other than that, I've had no issues, and uh, some people have complained about vibration going on this particular pipe down by where the fog light's at, behind the fog light. I haven't had any issues with it. Uh, it cleared that no problem. I still have about a half inch of clearance there. So again, not a problem at all. And uh, the coolant overflow tank, I mean, it's, it's small. It's not big. But your pipe fits in there, or your hose fits in there. And, uh, you know, you put your coolant in there, so whatever. I mean, it's, it's there. <laughs> it's probably the best way to put it. And, uh, I mean, it, it's been great. I haven't had any problems. It's probably, like, the biggest modification I've done to this car, and I've wanted to go front mount for a while, mainly just because of the aesthetic looks of it. And uh, I haven't had any issues with it. It's been great. My air-fuel ratios, again, have been fine. My... Uh, my ignition timing, everything like that has been great. 
Uh, we're starting to finally get some cooler weather early in the mornings here in Florida. So it, I am able to feel a little bit of a difference, but the best part is when you can feel your end tank from one side, your hot side here, to your cold side over here. And it is just, I mean, you can literally tell hot air being blown from the turbocharger and then it becomes extremely cold here. And that's usually something you can't feel with the top mount intercooler because you literally have to put your hand right on top of it and it's just, oh, it's either hot or cold. And that's it. So, hope you enjoyed and uh, hopefully this gives you some insight on front mounts. Thank you.